Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Rotten Tomatoes is Wrong. I am your host, Mark Ellis, and I am boarding a plane, and I have my tray table up, and I am taking flight solo today. That's right. The little teenage bird is flying from the nest for the first time because Jacqueline Coley is on assignment. Sometimes it's a more mysterious assignment than other times. All I can tell you all is this is that there's a big movie coming out and Jacqueline's doing a lot of coverage for it. That's all that I'm allowed to say. Maybe next week, if she joins us, she can tell us what she's doing. Or if she's still out next week, I'll have a little more information, but that's neither here nor there because we may be down at Jacqueline Coley, but we're up not just a special guest today. We're also up a producer or in our show, Producee, who's going to be contributing to the program today because we're talking about some Brad Pitt movies that may or may not have been wrongfully labeled as rotten, according to the tomato meter. Three Brad Pitt legendary movies from 1994 to 2004. That's what we're going to be covering here today. So each of us took a Brad Pitt movie that is rotten according to the tomato meter. What's interesting is that all three of these Brad Pitt movies are fresh according to the audience score. It's almost like the audience is seeing something in these movies or maybe six somethings that are in between the waist and chest area that the critics aren't seeing in terms of Brad Pitt and the quality of these pictures. So the movies that we're going to be talking about in no particular order are Legends of the Fall, Meet Joe Black and Troy. Legends of the Fall from 1994. Meet Joe Black from 98 and Troy from 2004. I actually know Meet Joe Black came out in November of 98. Do you want to know why? You're going to find out in just a sec. But first, let's bring in Producey Lucy here. So Producey Lucy, you are here hey. and we... We were kind of spitballing how to do a Brad Pitt episode. We yes. knew that Jacqueline was going to be out. We know that Jacqueline dearly loves Brad Pitt, especially when he oh, yeah. is in a Quentin Tarantino movie fixing stuff on a roof. Yes. Um, you are probably a Brad Pitt fan, but I don't want to put words in your mouth. I'm a Brad Pitt fan. My husband, Aaron, and I both have the same level of crush on him. We mm. not only think he's one of the most beautiful specimens <laughs> to grace our earth, but actually one of... I, I, you know, it, it's taken me years to get here, but I think he's one of the best actors we've ever had. Oh, I it love might him. Have taken, I don't think it took you years to get, I think it might have taken him years to get there, but now <laughs> he is there. And I, I think he's a great actor, Academy Award winner now. So um, yeah. you and Aaron, that's that's each other's uh, sort of uh, hall pass is Brad Pitt. Oh, so that's going to yeah. work well for y'all's relationship. Um, who yeah. I want to bring in now is our very special guest who I've been dear friends with for a long time. I knew her first as Janine Dabeen, and that's actually how you can follow her on Twitter where she's doing a bunch of great stuff. You may know her as Janine the Machine from her exploits in the movie Trivia Schmodown. She's one of the great competitors in the history of the movie Trivia Schmodown, and now you can find her as one of the hosts at the It's a Wonderful Podcast feed. It is Janine Bryce our very special guest today. Janine, it is so great to see you and to talk about movies with you under, I would say, less pressurized <laughs> circumstances yeah. than you and I are used to. Pretty excited for that and <laughs> excited we're talking Brad Pitt. He definitely made the high school binder. So, you know, I am a fan. <laughs> Uh, great actor for sure. He's a risk taker, whether it be eating on camera, you know, just kind of going with it, uh, trying a weird <laughs> accent, which we will probably talk about today. Uh, he just goes for it. So I really appreciate that about him. <laughs> Don't, I, I, Lucy, at some point, I'm going to have to sneak some sort of movie trivia here at the end for Janine. And, and, and you can play as well. So I lose. I automatically <laughs> lose. <laughs> I don't know. Y'all seem like some pretty big Brad Pitt stands. And there's obvious reasons why folks would be fans of Brad Pitt. But then there's also the movies themselves, which we're going to get into and break down. So the way that we usually do it here on Rotten Tomatoes is wrong. Not every week, but we usually like to give you a synopsis, particularly if it's a movie that maybe not everyone has seen. And for these three movies, they vary in popularity as far as Brad Pitt canon goes. And I would have to say that, Janine, I think the movie that you selected for this episode is probably the best known of the three as far as like Brad Pitt mythology, right? Yes. This is kind of his big introduction into leading man status, I'd say. And so your, what is your movie? And just give us a quick log line as to what it's about. 
Uh, I'm talking about Legends of the Fall from 1994. Um, Very romantic Brad Pitt in this film. It follows the Ludlow family in 1900s uh, Montana on this big sweeping ranch. And uh, some division happens in the family dealing with loss and love and, and lots of drama. So love loss nice. and drama and part of that drama nice. is that it didn't quite make it to fresh on the tomato meter 58 percent rotten so it's nice. so so cool it's right in that space balls range um producing lucy your movie oh, yeah your, oh. what's your brad pitt movie and what is oh. it about troy my friends now if you've read <laughs> the iliad and the odyssey which i have not you're going to be good to go about what this movie's about because it's ultimately about achilles the famous greatest warrior of all time who went to Tro- to Troy to actually help get Helen back. In the movie, we have Agamemnon, who's played by Succession's Brian Cox with the most stellar wig of all time. His brother, I'm not going to be able to pronounce his name, is pr- played by Brendan Gleeson. And ultimately, Brendan Gleeson's character, it's like Melanis or something. Mel- Mel- Melanie. Menela. Yes, Menela. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. She's got me. So his wife is Helen. She gets taken by my least favorite character in the whole movie, Paris, played by Orlando Bloom. And his brother's Hector, and they are the princes of Troy. So next thing you know, Agamemnon and Menelaus are going to (laughs) go fight in Troy, but Achilles works for Agamemnon and doesn't want to. And it's a bunch of hot, sweaty men, both literally and figuratively, on the beaches of Troy in Grecian leather, you know, looking nice while they stab each other's eyes out. And ultimately, Achilles' biggest goal in life is to be remembered through the ages. So even though he dies at the end of the movie in a really lame way by my least favorite character, Paris, a.k.a. Orlando Bloom, worst actor ever, um, we do, in fact, remember his name. So it's incredible. And the only thing missing from the movie is Phil the satyr from Disney's animated Hercules. That's my only complaint. (laughs) And that's that it. Was, that's the movie. <laughs> that, I mean, look, it, it's a lot to break down Troy. And so I'm not going to I'm not going to beat up on producing Lucy too hard for having a, an in-depth synopsis, because that <laughs> is you're taking the, the, the entire Iliad and trying to break it down like many a high school student it's has failed to do. Oh, so yeah. <laughs> I yeah. feel like that was not just a great coverage of the movie Troy, but also of like it, that was a good eighth grade book report. And I think I'd give you like at least a B plus. <laughs> to yes. say that like you read the Iliad. So my Thank movie you. for reasons um, about the film itself and also other reasons is Meet Joe Black. And that came out in 98 and it is sandwiched in between. Uh, actually, no, this is the worst rated movie of any of the three we're talking about today. Shocking. Troy is 53%. So that's at least, you know, fresh adjacent. Meet Joe Black is 45% rotten. And this is the story of Death, but death has never looked better. This is a sexy grim reaper, and it's played obviously by Brad Pitt, who falls in love with Claire Forlani. And uh, wouldn't you know it, she's a human. And so he sort of wants to strike up this romance. And so he uses her daddy, played by Anthony Hopkins's Bill, as a conduit, sort of unwittingly so. But there's some things that Bill maybe can use Joe for, and Joe can use Bill for. And so that's sort of our adventure. And I say adventure very loosely because this movie is about three hours and... <laughs> Boy, do you feel the three hours? But should that mean that it's 45% rotten? That's what we're getting into today here on the show. So we got Lucy, we got Janine, we got me. And now we have Tim Ryan, our expert review curation manager, who is going to take us through what the critics were saying about these three movies at the time of their release, at the decade of their release. So, Brian, hit the music. Two minutes with Tim. All right, today we're going to discuss three movies that all drew mixed reviews from the critics, but still helped to solidify Brad Pitt's status as one of the biggest movie stars in the world. Let's do this in chronological order. Legends of the Fall from 1994 is rotten at 58% on the tomato meter with 57 reviews, and it has an 87% audience score. Meet Joe Black from 1998 is rotten at 45% with 49 reviews, and it has an 81% audience score. Anne Troy from 2004 is rotten at 53% with a 73% audience score. And for the record, the best-reviewed Brad Pitt movie is Moneyball from 2011, which is certified fresh at 94%. The worst-reviewed is Cool World from 1992, which is at 4%. 
So what did the critics have to say about some of these rotten Brad Pitt films? In a fresh review of Troy, Sean P. Means of the Salt Lake Tribune wrote, If you feared Pitt would be too lightweight, more Pacific calm than Aegean storm, his performance here will convince you. However, in a rotten review of Legends of the Fall, Janet Maslin of the New York Times wrote, Mr. Pitt's diffident mix of acting and attitude works to such heartthrob perfection, it's a shame the film's superficiality gets in the way. So that's some Brad Pitt. I will now hand control of this podcast back to Jacqueline and Mark. Take it! It's yours! Back to you, folks. <laughs> ah, Tim, always peppering in the references. Thank you, Tim, for what the critics were saying at the time of the release of Legends of the Fall, Meet Joe Black, and then Troy in that order. So without further ado, let's get into movie talk. And I should introduce Brian, our engineer on this episode heretofore, as Brad Pitt Stan Brian. So Brad Pitt Stan Brian, hit the music. Let's just think about Brad Pitt in general. Janine, when did Brad Pitt first come across your radar? And do you have like a favorite, favorite Brad Pitt movie of all time? Probably the movie that really kind of got my attention with him was probably Seven. Yep. Uh, yep. So that's yes. kind of a favorite of mine. Uh, also love Interview with a Vampire. It was kind of this whole him and Tom Cruise in this rivalry for for my heart <laughs> at the time. Uh, so yeah, Interview with a Vampire and, and and Seven were kind of the the mainstays for me really discovering Brad Pitt. Yeah, Lucy, it's it's like Brad Pitt had those those two lives in the early to mid 90s where everybody discovered him in the early 90s is like, oh, yeah. it's that sexy guy from Thelma and Louise or he like pops up in true romance. And then you actually get to see him act in movies that Janine's talking about with Seven and with the interview of the vampire. And by the way, the rivalry between Brad Pitt and Tom Cruise, the winner of that is obviously Christian Slater. Thank you. <laughs> He's also an interview with the vampire. I want to give. C. Slate. Oh, Christian. His, we need a Christian Slater episode. That's neither here nor there. Lucy, I know you're a Brad Pitt fan as well. When did Brad Pitt yes. first come across the Lucy meter? So my earliest memory of watching Brad Pitt was actually the movie, and this is this will paint a picture for young Lucy's little life here, was the movie <laughs> California. Yeah. <laughs> where he's like a murderer. <laughs> with a K. So dark. California with a K. So that's my first memory of it. And I remember being... First off, like drawn in by him just like physically, because how could you not be? But then the movie really messing with me because I was like, wait, this man is really frightening. And I, I don't know if I have a favorite Brad Pitt film. Ultimately, if he's in a movie, I'm going to love it. Another early memory, I watched the movie A Devil's Own, where he plays an IRA terrorist, ultimately. Um, and and he has a terrible accent in that film. It's with Harrison Ford. He comes <laughs> to the United States and stays with Harrison's family. It's very strange. Um, and I find that he often dies in his films, but I think A Devil's Own might just for nostalgia reasons be one of my favorite movies, even though I know it's not like one of his best performances. <laughs> well, you get to see him and Harrison Ford. I mean, nobody's going to complain yeah. about that in the same way the interview with the vampire. Yeah, it's cool to see vampires trolling around New Orleans, but it's also awesome oh, yeah. to see like Brad Pitt and Tom Cruise together. For me, I I, yeah. I remember Cool World trailers. I remember like hearing yes. about this movie Cool World, Cool World, and thinking like, is this the next Roger Rabbit? I and had a poster of Cool World. <laughs> you had a, you did, did you see the movie? I've never seen it. I, I did. It's, it's it's weird and not good, but yeah. I don't know. I just it was Brad Pitt. And he was gorgeous and oh cartoons and doing crazy things, scandalous it's the, things. It's the movie that taught us <laughs> that you can take live action and animation and blend it, and it doesn't always mean it's going to be Who Framed Roger Rabbit or even Space yeah. Jam. Sometimes you just miss the mark. Um, I can't remember the first time I liked Brad Pitt. I, I can say that was Ocean's Eleven because, you know, there's just this thing when you're in Ooh, yeah. school and middle school to high school, every girl, Janine, loved Legends of the Fall. If they made Legends of the Fall <laughs> Trapper Keepers, every girl in 7th through 10th, 11th, 12th grade would have had them. And so I think just instinctively guys are like, oh, that's what the girls are into. I'm going to go over here and watch I don't the Bruce Willis and Sylvester Stallone blow stuff up. <laughs> so I was never into Legends of the Fall, but watching this movie, I see the appeal of it not just from like a brad pitt is sexy standpoint but like why 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 is legends of the fall your movie that you think that folks need to check out maybe has been done an injustice on the tomato meter 
Um, it's a very simple story, but uh, with Edward Zwick directing, it feels very epic and grand and sweeping. Um, there's so much to look at. You're on this beautiful ranch. You see like the snow-capped mountains and the hills and, and the cliffside. So it's a gorgeous romantic setting in general. Um, Brad Pitt gets like three epic like entrances in this movie <laughs> so I, you know i get the appeal for every teenage girl at the time um and it's a heartbreaking story uh i'm a huge fan of romance i can find romance in any story like troy there's so much going on but my beeline is like the briseis and achilles romance so like that's you know, what captured my heart, the whole twists and the drama of, of her kind of coming between these brothers. Um, so yeah, the soapiness of it is, is totally my, totally my vibe. So uh, yeah, just the soapy drama, the sweeping epic of it all. It's kind of giving you several genres, history, a war film, a romance film, a, a dramatic film. So you're getting a lot with this movie. So definitely, I don't know why it's so low. It's, it's great. And Lucy, Eddie Edwards you, Wick has like his other films are pretty high. Like I think Glory is like 94%. Um, and Last Samurai is like 63%. So, you know, he's oh, a great director. Dang. I'm not sure why his of uh, this his historical film, like his others, just is so low. I'm glad you hit on that because Lucy, if you look at the critics' consensus on Rotten Tomatoes, and I was looking at some of the reviews at the time from Legends of the Fall, every one of them is praising Edward Zwick as a director because, like Janine said, he does make this movie feel so epic and so huge, even though at its heart it, it, it's it, it, it's a soap opera. Right. I agree with everything that you guys are saying, and and I think what what's interesting to me is and the thing that captured me. Okay, I'm a basic girl in a lot of ways. I was very, I'm very taken by um, three very handsome men, Aiden Quinn, Aiden Quinn, <sighs> Anthony Aiden Hopkins. Yeah. Oh, and, and Brad Pitt. <laughs> Sorry, Henry Thomas, you're not my type, but, um, I was pulled and <laughs> sorry, sorry, Elliot. <laughs> yeah, sorry, baby. Phone e. home, boy. Elliot. <laughs> <laughs> Go home, all right. Go on that spaceship with him at the end of the movie, and we'll be fine. Um, sorry, no, I'm just kidding. But I think the same things kind of pulled me into that film, and it's confusing why critics didn't like it because I believe it was also Oscar nominated three times, yeah. one for best cinematography, and I really do love sort of sweeping epic films. You know, um, and this one, I mean, it really does have everything. So you're kind of like, what? I don't understand, like, why the critics hated it in particular. And it's like, was it Brad Pitt that they hated or, you know, because he always had to kind of rebrand himself because he was always taken as like the pretty boy. But he actually is a yeah. killer in it. He's a good yes. actor in this movie. Aiden Quinn is incredible. I believe everybody's relationship. So I don't know. I don't know what the deal is <laughs> ultimately. I think that with Brad Pitt and with Legends of the Fall, if you go back to 94, where he was is I think that particularly in the 90s, we like to put movie stars in a box where it's like you're either this or you're that, but you can't be everything. And so right. because he wasn't yet a full fledged movie star, I think a river runs through it might have been the closest thing to like the you know, the, the big time movie that, that he was in. But that was also a similar feel. Like I, I would get A River Runs Through It and Legends of the Fall <laughs> confused sometimes yeah. where it's like, wait, is that from this movie or from that and movie? That one, yeah. Janine, what's the scene that's separate? What's the scene that you could put on in Legends of the Fall? And you're like, oh, okay, now I know I'm not watching River Runs Through It and I know I'm watching <laughs> Legends of the Fall. Like, like, what's your favorite scene to go back and revisit in that movie? Well, I did mention several epic entrances that, this character that his character Tristan makes in this movie. Um, one of them involves rushing in with a herd of wild horses. Uh, but probably the first entrance, the first time we see the character of Tristan played by Brad Pitt in this movie, he's coming over this hill. He's just killed an animal. So he's bringing his fresh kill. He's about to meet his youngest brother's fiance. And it's kind of the click of chemistry between uh, the character Susanna, played by Julia Ormond and uh, Tristan, and how Edward Zwick kind of frames it. He cuts everyone out of the frame. So you're just kind of locked on the two of them and the looks they're giving each other. And I'm totally living for it. And just that gif of him just, you know, pulling his hat in the water, kind of sprinkling up like it's perfect. So just the introduction, the first introduction of that character is very memorable for me. So this is Tristan. And does he speak English? 
Tristan, for God's sake. <laughs> Mr. Finn Cannon, it's a pleasure to meet you. I hope you and Ugly here find every happiness together. Momo Toma Smell. Don't mind my brother, your uh, dog has more breeding than he has. Lucy, I, I loved hearing you uh, be a big supporter <laughs> like I am of, of Brad Pitt, sure, but Aiden Quinn is oh. so underrated as a as a performer. Oh. He's been this in so everything. Good. He's been around for years. He was great Benny in Benny June. and June. Yes. Thank you. The Proclaimers. And, and he's That's also so great magic. in this. I mean... <laughs> It, he's the guy never misses Aiden, and I'm not no. just saying that because he's in the Wake Forest based movie The Fifth Quarter which I'm sure you can check out on I don't know maybe Hallmark <laughs> has a streaming channel but you get like the harsh winters in this movie and you get the actual wars in this movie and it feels like Aiden Quinn is just the leader of this pack yes oh yeah and and I think too you know I it, he does so well in this film because I kind of hate him the whole time. And I don't know if other people feel that way, <laughs> but I really wanted Susanna and Tristan to get together. Julia Ormond and Brad Pitt's characters. It's like, yeah. you know, the, you know, and, and then they end up together and I was just like, you bastard. And she killed herself because of you. And but you also so feel bad good. for him. You I also know. feel kind of bad for him because it's established early on that he, that Tristan is the favorite of their father. Right. Um, he's the golden child. And so you understand his resentment. You understand why, you know, yeah. he feels the way he does and why he does the things he does. So right. for me, I can kind of, the way he plays it, I, I, I'm like, oh, he's such an ass. But I also I kind of sympathize with him because well, true. of what Aiden Quinn is doing. Right. And that scene too, I think it kind of sets it up because doesn't he, don't the actions when they're at the war, because it's Alfred is Aiden, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And, and then it's Henry Thomas's character. He's Samuel. Samuel, so, mm -hmm. So he ultimately doesn't he send Samuel like accidentally to his death in the war no. scene? No. Is it like a decision of his? So Samuel's supposed to kind of stay behind and translate right. something. And Tristan goes to visit Alfred because he's been injured. And right. then they get word that someone who's supposed to take a message couldn't, and Samuel volunteered and went with and while they were both away. And oh. yes, and then he dies. He's and trying, that he's trying, there's a lot of family pressure. There's a lot of family pressure to be the hero. So Plus, much. he saw an alien rig up a communication device <laughs> when he was a kid, and he's like, well, I just got to get a message across state line. How hard can this be? And yeah. it ends up being his his life. His demise, and yes. that's a great, yeah. that scene too, that's one of the, I think that's one of the scenes where you're like, when Brad Pitt's like holding like, uh, and you're just like, okay, this movie slaps. And uh, another one too, I think that's so good. And you're just devastated is the death of Isabel too. Oh my gosh. You know, it's accidental yes. and Brad's reaction. This is where I'm like, Brad Pitt is so not good. just a pretty face. He's so good. Yes. And the, and the like, what's wrong? And he looks behind and he goes to her and she's just like, oh, and he has a bullet here. And you know, the moment it happens because the baby just starts crying. And then just, you hear, you know, her mother scream out. And yeah, it's, it's, it's totally. And the reaction of the like, it's a, the police officer guy, like the little, the little Banyan brothers or whatever their names. And they're, and they're just kind of like, we gotta so go. So smug. And, you, oh. you're, oh. and yeah. you're like, Brad, I hope you. Kill all yes, of these people. Kill them all. Kill them you know, all. it's it's interesting y'all bring up that scene because I was gonna highlight that as as my sort of parting question with this movie is is it a good performance by Brad Pitt? Because again, it, like he started out as this guy who I think a lot of people just had as like a pinup model, and then we obviously know him as an award level actor now every time he's in something. Is he great in Legends of the Fall, or do you, are you just watching the progress of somebody learning their craft? He is great in this film. He's showing so much range and he has the opportunity to do so many different things. So you see the fun loving side of him, the adventurous side of him with his brothers and the camaraderie between the two of them. Um, you know, when Samuel goes to him for advice about his first time with Susanna yeah. and just kind of <laughs> that whole conversation that you really feel he has a great scene with everybody. So that's like his scene with Samuel. He has that really uh, great scene with Alfred where, you know, Alfred's telling him he has to marry Susanna and that, you know, Alfred for telling him he can't make her happy and that whole kind of uh, exchange between the two of them uh you know alfred accuses him of, of getting samuel killed and and you know 
that that just hits a nerve for Tristan, that whole scene. So he has great, strong scenes with every character, great chemistry with every character. You know, he goes from this happy-go-lucky, wild adventurer type guy to once Samuel dies, he, you know, feels this guilt and he sinks into this kind of madness. You know, you see him go scalp a bunch of guys after that. And um, even when he finds a little bit of solace with uh, Susanna, he kind of gets some PTSD and and just reverts back into this kind of static depression that he has to kind of take off. So the way he portrays just this range of emotions uh, and then kind of his peaceful time when he gets with Isabel too, uh, and then back to kind of this wild man again. So he, he's, he hits the gamut of so many emotions uh, mm. so early on in his career doing this movie. So I think it wasn't just a pretty face. He definitely yeah. proved a lot acting wise in this movie. He had a lot of range and did a lot of different things. And, and I believed it. it was very believable. You really felt the pain of the moments he was going through. The curse of Brad Pitt being somebody that's that good looking, but also like really <laughs> loving the craft of acting yeah. and having to kind of prove like I'm not actually just here to look nice. And yeah. I think he's, but he's got really... a good cry face. A lot of people don't have a good oh, cry he face. Does. He does. He does. Who can sexy cry like that? Not, just not like, this guy. I've seen myself in the mirror. It's not good. <laughs> yes. I'm horrible. I turn into a tomato and my face swells. It's horrible. But it's just like, let me come comfort you, Brad. Don't shed that. Yes, definitely be tear. like Susanna kissing his head and holding him. And, oh, <laughs> okay, darling, it's okay. So it oh, feels like, so I, I think I know Janine's answer. Lucy, are you on the, the Janine wagon where it's like, no, this is definitely a movie that has been done an injustice by the tomato meter that it should be fresh? Yes. This is so wrong. This score, I agree yes. with the audience score for sure. This okay. movie, I mean, and, and even like the Academy recognizing it or, you know, nominating it three times. It's like, hello, you know, these are people that are like, what the hell? Critics. What were they? They just had a bad day score. when they saw the screening. Yeah, I, they must the, have. the thing that, that surprised me when seeing this movie, I, I couldn't even tell you if I'd seen this movie start to finish until prepping for this episode, is how it does. It's not just like a, a sort of sugar-coated fairy tale about war and, oh, these brothers going off to war together. It, it does show the horrors of war, how war sticks yeah. with you long after the battles are done. And again, 87% on the audience score. So this is the highest rated movie, according to both the tomato meter and the audience score of the three pictures we're talking about today. Yeah. And so it also gives us a very easy transition into the next movie because Meet Joe Black also stars not just Brad oh. Pitt, but also <laughs> Sir Anthony <laughs> Hopkins. Oh. And so <laughs> this is the movie that I brought to the conversation, not to bore everybody, but because... I celebrate this movie for two reasons. One, the movie itself, I feel like was a big swing. I'm not sure if it connected the way that it was hoping to do, but I like the idea. I think this is cooler than like a city of angels where it's easy to be an angel who meets Meg Ryan and falls in <laughs> love with her. You're freaking death, man. You are the grim <laughs> reaper. We're talking the seventh seal. We're talking Bill and Ted's bogus journey. You are the... Oh, yeah the epitome of what it means to cross over into the next life. If there is one and death would know that better than I would, but this death is like, you know what? I kind of am sweet on somebody now. And I was really inspired by Anthony Hopkins. And if there's a guy to inspire death, to want to do something different with his existence, probably is going to be the words of Anthony Hopkins. And so yes. Anthony Hopkins yes, is talking to, to his daughter about, Hey, Hey, don't, you know, lightning's going to strike and you're going to meet that somebody. Well, lightning did strike and boy did it ever because now death is falling for her. and death now, as, as Anthony Hopkins clumsily gives the name, oh, this is Joe Black, who's now on Earth and is like, I'm going to give this thing a shot. Very clumsy. It's kind of like me at a dinner party. He's all thumbs. Can't really use a <laughs> fork or a knife all that well, but he can make love with the best of them. So, um, oh, my you know, gosh. It, it, it becomes scene. this very yes. long winded sort of romantic diatribe. But I think there's a lot to take out of meet Joe Black. Before I turn it over to the ladies here, I do have to give you the other reason why yeah. I love talking about this movie. And it's because I paid to see this movie in 1998 <laughs> three times. And I, I, I bet Janine knows the reason why I paid to see the movie. Um, I paid to see this movie, not once. I don't even know if I stayed at all to see the actual movie. But How because dare. the trailer for yes. Star Wars Episode One, <laughs> one. The Phantom Menace, was attached <laughs> to meet this. Joe <laughs> Black. And so it was either right before Thanksgiving or during Thanksgiving weekend. 
when me and it wasn't just me, folks. A lot of people went to go see Meet Joe Black so they could get the first look in the theater of the new Star Wars movie. And I'm going to say best eight to ten bucks I spent that entire fall because, man, that's still one of my favorite trailers of all time. Every legend oh, nice. has, a, has an or beginning. Every story has a whatever first step. It's great. Every journey has a first step. So that's another reason why I meet Joe Black. Just kind of gives me the feels. Um, <laughs> did I watch the Phantom Menace trailer again before meet Joe Black this time? No, I didn't. Because oh. I didn't want... Because meet Joe Black had to follow that for three times. And I thought that was unfair to do to the Grim Reaper and Anthony Hopkins and to Claire Forlani. So I do find redeeming qualities with this movie. I think it's better than a 45% of the tomato meter. I would put it right around... Rotten Tomatoes is wrong, but I would say I'd put it right around like... 60%. So I'm just going to get just too fresh. Janine, how do you feel about Mr. Black? Well, my brother was obsessed with this movie. He asked me to borrow some allowance so he could buy the big VHS2 taper of wow. this movie. Wow. Yeah. So um, I watched it several times growing up. And I actually, you know, me, my romantic self, my loving, loving romance <laughs> films, I definitely got into it. And of course, Brad Pitt just being gorgeous and also just having this really sweet, childlike uh, wonder about everything. Like the whole peanut butter scene is just adorable. Yeah. <laughs> He's just being so cute, but also very kind of sophisticated. Um, I love the score of this movie as well. Yeah. The music um, was good. I, yeah. I will say the, the music was, was, is it Thomas was a Thomas Newton Howard or whatever his name is? Thomas Newman? It I think is it's Thomas, uh, Newman. Thomas Newman. Is, yeah, okay. Randy Newman's it, cousin. Is the composer, oh. yeah. And so the music did stand out, but I also, I like that you bring out that, that Lucy, Janine kind of references the fish out of waterness of yeah. Brad Pitt yeah. on Earth. Kind of reminded me of when we get Wonder Woman out of Temescara, and it's like you got to kind of interact in the real world. Just give me a little bit of those shades. So I kind of appreciated that. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I think the peanut butter scene too, that uh, I'm just sitting there going like, you're the most adorable little right? death in the whole world. <laughs> and then I said little death, oops. Speaking of little deaths, uh, the sex scene is... I think one of the best sex scenes ever. It, when I was younger, I, I first watched this film probably, you know, not long after it came out. Um, and then rewatching it last night. Okay, three hours. Seriously, I was yeah, like, oh, it, I don't think this movie needed to be that long. It doesn't need yeah. to be that long. It's so long. But that that that's the sex scene kind of, I, I, I was trying to figure out how I felt about it while I was watching. I was like, this is a little weird. Because, you know, and she's, she even says, Claire Forlani's Susan says like, it's like making love with someone for the, for the first, for the first time. time. And you're just like, oh, okay, like that's a little <laughs> weird. And then I was like, wait, you know what though? This is his first experience. I'm just gonna let it, I'm just gonna let him have it. And the way it's like shot close up on their face and his like lip is quivering that's the and focus. almost crying. Because he doesn't know what's happening to himself. He yes. doesn't know what's yes. happening. It's it so never looks good. that cool. I know from experience, it never looks that cool. When it's your first time, you never have that Speak cool. For Thomas Newman score isn't <laughs> sweeping in while it's happening. Oh, it just yeah. in the pool room. It's, yeah, it's, it's that much more naked house. gun than anything else. Oh your first time, gosh. but and, and it, it, I, I was so upset when that scene happened, and they didn't kick into the foreigner song. Feels like the first time, <laughs> and it was all Janine. I'm sure you know this because I think one of your ace categories of many ace categories in the Schmodown was Brad Pitt movies. Martin Brest directed this movie yes. who's famous for directing the, these like sort of action comedies like Beverly Hills Cop and Midnight <laughs> Run. It's like it's an odd choice. The guy also did Scent of a Woman so I can kind of yeah. see it oh, but oh, yeah. meet Joe Black. Yeah it I wouldn't say it's Martin Brest's best work but I think that he gets a lot of, out of this material even if it took him a long time to get there. I think, you know, also I have to say the performances in this movie. So you got Brad, you've got Anthony Hopkins, who, by the way, this might be one of my favorite Anthony Hopkins movies. I know that's weird to say, but he kills it he's like so a man good. knowing he's going to die. He's so good. And the tension between him and death and their agreement not to say who he is. And the fact and, the, and then he kind of explodes at him when he finds out he's like, I'm in love with your daughter. And he's like, the f you are. <laughs> yeah. You know? He doesn't care. Oh, like Brad Pitt's no. giving him all these warnings and he's just, yeah. he doesn't care. Like I was like, he's you're done. gonna take me anyway. I don't care. And he's gonna stand up to him. I love that. Yeah. I mean, did this man get nominated for an Oscar for this movie? I hope he did because dang, he's mm. so good in it. But you know who's not so good in my opinion? Claire Forlani starts to kind of do the her thing like a little <laughs> bit more intensely throughout yeah. the whole 
What do you mean, Joe? I'm just going to rely on my beauty and, you know, yeah. just chill yeah. over here. <laughs> just like, what the <laughs> hell is going on over here? Why? Are, and, and the whole time Aaron watched it with me last night, he was like, her eyes. It looks like she's in pain. <laughs> just like, <laughs> Joe, what are you? What's going on? You know, you're like, okay, get back to she, Anthony and Brad in the room. She's playing <laughs> against a basically a hot Ken doll. I don't know what she's supposed to do because it's Brad Pitt, but it's like Brad Pitt in a, with a four year old brain. And so you like, I understand everything that she's feeling. She's like, this guy's so hot, I'm not going to let him go. But man, do I have a lot of clay to mold here? Oh yeah, my gosh, so- true. I'm looking at the uh, I'm looking at the box office for Meet Joe Black right now, and Meet Joe Black did. Uh, uh, just under $45 million worth of business in the States. It ended up having a worldwide run of over $140 million. But there also is the footnote here that Meet Joe Black was one of the, the few films showing the first trailer for Star Wars, The Phantom Menace. <laughs> of course and, they added that. <laughs> and it was reported that droves of Star Wars fans bought tickets for the film only to leave after the trailer showed. Here's the other thing you have That's to know hateful. about so 98 sad. Mark Ellis is that me and my friends went to go see this. And at the time, again, I'm much more of a uh, a more broad film appreciator than I might have been back then. We were a bunch of, of, of horny teenagers. We didn't stay for the sex scene. We heard about the sex scene, but just to get to the sex scene was just too much road to plow for us. <laughs> and I didn't want to be seeing them make love in a quivering lip from a first time thinking about Darth Maul and the double-sided lightsaber igniting. So Fair. I just, Fair. I, I, I removed myself from the equation, but I'm going to say wow. Rotten Tomatoes is wrong, but not by much. I don't, I think this oh. might be. I mean, th- <laughs> I think it's probably taken down a bit because of that Caribbean accent. <laughs> oh my gosh. We have to talk about that. Please do. That is crazy. Okay. Okay. What, what, you what say it, that? Janine. That was, I literally, so when the when the grandma, okay, you set it up because I can't. It, that's insane. He goes to visit Claire Falani at the hospital where she works and a Jamaican woman and her daughter come in and the Jamaican woman, I guess they're, they're supposed to kind of hint that she has some sensibility to kind of tell that he is death. So she feels that he's an evil spirit. And uh, she is talking in her, you know, Caribbean type accent. And he replies to her with his own Caribbean accent. Obia. Right. Will be evil and not evil, oh man. And what you is then? I from that next place. You waiting here to take us? Like you're the bus driver to the no man, I on holiday. And like lingo, Caribbean type, like lingo. It's... And it doesn't stop. And he keeps doing oh, it. No. And he kind of like keeps... raises his voice and starts doing it. And my yes. eyebrows shot into my hairline. I was like, Brad Pitt, oh. the risk taker. Brad Pitt, the risk taker. He commits. It's... I appreciate the commitment. I, I might have rewound that he it. tried it. Yeah, I, I might have watched it a couple different times because I don't know why that isn't up there with like all those embarrassing early acting performances of people. Like we should be talking about this scene more often than we do. Yes, yes, this is and very odd. you know, speaking of other weird scenes, and and it's funny because what the movie still somehow makes me feel a little emotional about when it he comes back to the hospital and she's like, "Please take me, sure. I want to die." Yeah. yeah, there's all these sort of beautiful. The movie is bad crazy but in my favorite kind of way it's unexpected you're like what the hell is this about death takes a holiday ultimately okay and what's fabulous is that happens so my eyebrows are in my hairline and then the next thing you know I'm kind of like tearing up a little bit <laughs> like I'm yeah, I mean, it is, it, the scenes he has with her are really sweet and yeah. you know this kind of understanding they have and it's like the one person who actually kind of knows who he is that he can talk to that's not yelling at right. him like Anthony Hopkins <laughs> so like in in those aspects like you get something out of those scenes but it's, it's true. just it's just kind of weird <laughs> it's really weird I have two questions for y'all so the opening well sort of the opening and the ending so the scene where he gets hit by the double car, like a double hit. Mm. Thoughts about that? And then at the end, did you guys cry when Anthony finally gets taken? Will Perry? Will, will I didn't. Perish. I didn't cry, Janine. But I, I got, I got a little bit of feels in there. And as far as the yeah. the opening scene, that's why you hire Martin Brest to direct this movie because that guy knows <laughs> yeah. how to do car action. I 
remember first seeing that and it, it was very shocking the first yeah. time I saw this movie and, and that happened, the double. Because yeah, you, he almost gets hit and then you kind of take a breather and then immediately. Ooh. So I I liked how they kind of subverted your, your thought on that first kind of hit and then he yeah. gets the double hit. So that was very shocking. I got something out of that, that first time uh, watching it. And the end, no, I didn't cry, but I definitely was emotion. I felt the emotions of that. Scene. Did your brother <laughs> cry when he got it on VHS? <laughs> yeah. I-, I saw a tear. He will not admit it, but I, I saw a tear. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, hopefully he's <laughs> as pretty of a crier as Brad Pitt is. Um, Lucy, I, I think Janine and I are on the same page where we, we-, we can go. I'm not, I'm not going to say fresh. I'm going to say high rotten for this movie. Are oh. you on the same page, Lucy? No, this movie to me should be in the 70s. Oh, Not wow. certified fresh necessarily. Well, I don't know. I think this, I think Rotten Tomatoes is very wrong about this score, like very, very wrong. And I I might even say it could be like 75% certified fresh. I wow. love this movie. Caribbean accent aside, <laughs> very <laughs> awkward. But um, I do think there's there's so much more that's well done about it. There are problems, but there's so much that's well done that I think it sort of tips the scales for me. I, okay. I agree. I think it's a little. Yeah. It's. I think it's. I would put it slightly higher than than high rotten. I'd put it, you know, in in maybe sixty sixty five to seventy range. Yeah. OK, I mean, I, yeah. I'm I'm not going to lose any sleep over that one. The one that I will lose <laughs> sleep over is listening to Producey Lucy now stump for <laughs> Troy, which is 53 <laughs> percent. It is the audience score is fresh. It's 73 percent. Lucy, Troy, how do you feel about this movie? Wrong Tomatoes is wrong. It okay. should be where the audience score is, which is what, again, it's like 70s or something. Um, I think this should be like low 70s, not certified fresh. But I think this movie is actually you know, it's a Hollywood blockbuster film with Brad Pitt in it. Okay. So you're going to get basic, you know, Hollywood blockbuster tropes. We get it. Fine. Whatever. But I love historical movies, historical with quotes around the word historical. And um, I think why is because it's incredibly memorable. There are so many scenes that are like, I, I, I rewatched it last night as well, but I didn't really need to because I remembered so many of the scenes. One of the scenes in particular, Eric Bana and the Brad Pitt, so Achilles versus Hector duel. Oh, and it's heartbreaking wow. because those two characters, in my opinion, are the main yeah. leads. Like you're rooting for both of them, right? So it's kind of devastating. It's a beautiful fight. They did it themselves. They did not have stunt doubles. So that's incredible. Um, and then the sort of impact it has on Achilles afterwards where he's like, oh, maybe I shouldn't have done that in my rage because you killed my cousin, <laughs> Garrett yeah. Headland, a.k.a. Petrocles. On accident. Yeah, on accident. yeah. yeah not realizing. Yeah. <laughs> There's just so many things like that in the movie where you're like, it gets an, an emotional reaction out of me. And then, uh, you know, scenes like when Brad Pitt, so Achilles and his team of awesome Merry men. I forget what they're Myrmidon. called. The Myrmidons. The Myrmidons. <laughs> the Mermen. Uh, they go and they ultimately have like a D-Day on the beach of Normandy, yes. but in yes. Troy. And they take over the uh, temple to Apollo. And then they take um, a girl captive. And it's played by Rose Byrne. And eventually, Brad Pitt, Achilles, has to go talk to Agamemnon, a.k.a. Brian Cox. And he's a total dick. And he's like, I stole your girl. And Brad Pitt's like, you sack of wine. And it's just things (laughs) like that (laughs) that are so good. And I could just list a million things. So yes, Rotten Tomatoes is wrong. Tonight, I'll have her give me a bath. And then, who knows? You sack of wine. Before my time is done, I will look down on your corpse and smile. Good is a strong word. Good is a very strong word for those scenes. I, <laughs> I, I do like seeing Brian Cox as Agamemnon as like the the literal you know I- I Greek version of uh, Logan Roy from Succession. But yeah. stealing this movie for me is Sean Bean's portrayal of Odysseus. I love seeing oh, Sean Bean in this movie. Yes. That and was he, the highlight. And he doesn't die. He doesn't yeah. die, right? I know. We, we, I was waiting for it, and and it never happened. I was like, oh, sweet. We, we get out alive here. So, Janine, for me, I, it, it's always fun to go. And this is like Brad Pitt. You talk about like a physical, um, you, you talk about like a movie star kind of prime. This is him yeah. right during that apex. And so it is fun to go revisit something like that. I just never got a lot out of these huge epics that 
were basically watered down versions of the, like the Iliad, the Odyssey, stuff like that. I thought that even like Gladiator, I, I, Gladiator is a really good movie. I don't hold it up there with a lot of other folks where they put the pedestal they put it on. And certainly I'm not going to do that for Troy, even though I love Wolfgang <laughs> Peterson as a director for the most part. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm not a huge sword and sandal epic person, but uh, mm -hmm. I guess just the scale of this movie really grabbed me. And I, I mean, remember being a kid loving Greek mythology and reading books yeah. about it. And, you know, Hercules is my favorite Disney movie. So, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I really got into the action of this movie. I liked that they kind of took out the mythical aspects of it, like the magical kind of things and creatures and stuff and kind of made it feel like a piece of history. So I think that's why I kind of was able to get into it more. Um, absolutely love, love, love the scene with Peter O'Toole coming to uh, Achilles after yes. Hector's been killed and kisses his hands. And, and that's what makes Achilles break down and feel feel bad about what he's done when, you know, the king comes to him and, and that speech that Peter O'Toole gives, it's just, it's so good. It's so good. And of course, again, like me latching on to the romance and anything, I'm like obsessed with <laughs> oh, a whole yeah. kind of Romeo and Juliet love affair of Briseis and Achilles. So yeah, does definitely. that hold up to you? I mean, that was the thing that it never really popped for me. That, that romance no? never really did it for me. I, I never felt like, you know, we should really wage a war based on this. <laughs> I, I, I never felt like it was worth Worthy of, of of the the scope of the movie. Oh. I know we have to have it. Just I I never I've seen a lot of Brad Pitt romances where I'm like, yeah, I need this to work. This was not one of them, Lucy. Well, I felt like I think I feel like that romance between Briseis and Achilles, however short it was, was more impactful than the main romance that kind of leads to all of this between Helen uh, and Paris. Fair. I'll give you that. That's <laughs> fair. It was yeah. th the best in the movie for sure. Dude, Orlando Bloom's Paris pisses me off so bad. I'm it like, you started like this. Shit. Everybody died because of you. You're yes, also a and you bad get actor. To survive. You get to survive, and you get a you get a shoot, which is cheating. Okay, you shoot the greatest warrior with arrows, which easy kill. Okay, not cool. And and he goes off in the end, and that really affected me when I was younger. When I first watched, I was so angry. Yeah. And um, I was in love with Orlando Bloom, too, because of the Me Lord of the too. Rings. So I was I like, Legless, <laughs> you effing <laughs> bastard. Lucy, <laughs> Lucy, we need to get to the bottom of this. What, what is your hatred with Orlando Bloom stemming from? Well, first off, I think it's because I was betrayed. Because when I was in, I forget, maybe high school, I watched the Lord of the Rings movies, immediately was like, Legless is my boyfriend. I'm going to meet him and marry him one day. So I had He's an not actually an elf. You I know. Known so... So then I rewatched The Lord of the Rings because I do it every year. And as I've gotten older, I'm like, oh, you're actually like the worst part of this movie. Oh, really? So there's, so there's a betrayal, I think, that I had to go through and, and kind of wake up. And so when wow. I see him in this movie, I'm like, okay, we've got Peter O'Toole killing it. We've yes. got Eric Bana killing it. Brad Pitt is doing his Brad Pitt thing and killing it for the most part. Um, we've got Sean Bean as Odysseus killing it. Everybody's killing it. And then there's Orlando Bloom, who is kind of, in my mind, like playing himself. You know, he sucks. And then he's also Paris. So it's just, I'm very angry about it. And, oh, and he's doing the legless thing where he's like, it's a blood moon. There will be lives shed today. But he's like, Helen, I must go and fight for you because I ran away the first time. You're just like, shut she doesn't up, even, dude. And she doesn't even believe him. No, <laughs> like, no, like, this relationship is bad. He, like okay? the way he talks about, like when they're in that scene together and he's like, I will fight for your honor. I'll fight for you. I'll fight him for you. And she's, she's like, just like, sure. Yeah, yeah like her she's face like, is like, sure, dude. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, you're a wife stealer. Uh, I, even though I was the wife and I was okay. down. Have You're you not trustworthy. Big my exes. Uh, I don't know what that <laughs> Which oh, okay. Brendan Gleeson is good. Yes. Brendan Gleeson's great in this movie. Sean Bean's great in this movie. There, there's some performances to take away from it, and and like yeah. we talked about with Edward Zwick making Legends of the Fall feel as epic as he does. I think Wolfgang Peterson achieves that for sure. Mm -hmm. Like this yeah. is a huge historical epic. I yeah. think that y'all are trying to get me to say that Rotten Tomatoes is right <laughs> by saying that it's up to 53% just based on how much fun you can have watching this movie. I can't get the movie there. I'm so sorry. I am I think this movie, I think, I'm being as nice as possible, I think this movie and Meet Joe Black should trade places. I think this movie goes down to 45% on okay. the tomato meter and Meet Joe I, Black goes up to 53%. I agree, but not with your scores. I think 
Troy is the lowest one out of these three films. I yes. think Meet Joe Black, it for me, is probably number two. And then Legends of the Fall is number one. But they Janine, all need high scores. Janine wins the show. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Definitely. Of course. I she, do. Yeah. Yeah, hers and, is and, and I think I think I got to pick the movie first. I think we were doing this episode, and I told Lucy like last year. I'm like, oh, when we do that, meet Joe Black's my movie, and then Janine yeah. comes in swinging with <laughs> Legends of the Fall, and I'm like, oh man, okay, I, I think I lost this hand here. So Brad Pitt, an actor for all time, he's one of the biggest movie stars of all time. So we wanted to come on here and talk about some of his films that, if they're not the most talked about movies, we just wanted to deliver them justice if they deserve it. And I feel like Legends of the Fall was helped out by this show. And I feel like Troy and Meet Joe Black were, um, you know, also here. So <laughs> they Hater. also showed up for the ride. <laughs> and uh, showing up today is our, our, our two-pronged special guest of Janine Bryce and Producey Lucy. Producey Lucy, I think the kids know where to find you on this program each and every week doing the Lord's work. Janine, where can everybody find you and all your exploits? I know that uh, It's a Wonderful Life, It's a Wonderful Podcast. It's, it's like a feed, so y'all get to talk about a lot of different stuff on there. Yes. Yeah, so we also have our YouTube channel where we have a brand new show, Monday Madness. Uh, I co-host all these shows with my adorable British friend, Morgan Robinson. Mm -hmm. uh, Monday Madness, we just kind of have fun. We pick a random topic, discuss, play games. So it's a really fun time over there. Janine, thanks so much for being on the show. I can't. It's hard to believe we've done 100 <laughs> of these shows and this is your first time. But please yeah. come back Thank you soon. for having me. And, and educate me and Producey Lucy more, because as you can tell, we need it. <laughs> um, and Producey Lucy, thank you, too, for, for uh, you know, kind of wearing two hats today for producing and contributing My to pleasure. the Brad Pitt episode. Oh, it was easy peasy, lemon squeezy, because he's so nice. In the meantime, that was Janine Bryce. I still know Janine the Machine, Janine DeBean, but she <laughs> is she she's a Janine for all seasons. That is producer Lucy, engineer Brian Perez, who's seen Once Upon a Time in Hollywood more than just about any other movie. And for the whole gang here at Rotten Tomatoes, including my lovely co-host Jacqueline Coley, I am the not as lovely Mark Ellis. Thanks for watching or listening to this episode. And um, I don't know how to leave us with a Brad Pitt quote other than saying, I'm hungry. 